Okay, so now we want to add some animation. So what do we need to do? Um, the book has a whole section that discusses this inside chapter four and has some examples. But the essential idea is we want to have a function that gets called repeatedly by the browser. Uh, and the way that we get this function called is this function, request animation frame tick. So tick is my function. So I've written a new function, right? I put it right here below my main. Here's my new function tick. And what is going to happen every time the browser is going to call me? Well, first, I'm just going to use a console log to print some stuff in the console so I can find out this thing is running. This is just debugging. And then I'm going to tell it to draw everything, whatever is our call to draw everything. Um, and then I'm going to request that the browser call me again. Right. So this is in some sense, it's not it's not quite recursive, but I'm, I'm setting up a callback ask to the browser. Please call my function again. So this is all I have to do is I have to set this up and I set this re the re request to come back here and the browser will call this and we're going to do it. So let's go see what happens when we run this. So we load this page. Nothing is updating. Well, why is nothing updating? Because I've never call, caused this to be called yet. Right. So if I call tick once, then I'm going to get a request animation frame. So let's um, let's go ahead and just type into the console to request an animation frame. And now we're running. So now you can see, like after I called it the first time, the browser did call my tick function. When it gets to the bottom, it keeps getting called. And so here's my updates that are coming from this performance log. But everything is still active. I can still make my other adjustments because these are just adjusting the internal state um, that I've stored of the angle. So it hasn't stopped these things from running. So we might wish I didn't have to type into the console to get this thing started. So at the end of my main, what have I done so far? I've called render all shapes. Well, this just draws once. So I'm just going to change this to um, request the initial animation frame at the beginning of my main, which is going to get everything started. And now this will run automatically. So now I've got my animation hooked up to my shape. Right, so it's automatically swinging back and forth. And I still have control over my magenta, but I no longer have control over yellow uh, because it's hooked up to the animation. So how did I do this? So what I've done is in my tick function, I've just stored a, a global variable which keeps track of the current time. And I had to make two here. So I made something which sets the, keeps track of the start time when the program first starts. And then every time the tick runs, I check the current time subtract out the start time, and I'm left with something which is uh, stored, the number of seconds since my web page started running. Um, and I've got this divide by 1,000 because performance now returns milliseconds. So now that I have this variable that tells me how long since the program started running, it just keeps getting updated. Um, and you can see it getting in the console log. You can see it just gets updated. What are we going to do with it? So if we go down here to our yellow arm, we previously had a line where we were using our global angle that was set by our slider. And so now I'm going to instead just use the number of seconds. And here I've just hooked it up to a sign, right? I multiplied by 45 so it has enough angular change um, and set it to run. And that's all. And now I have this arm waving around.